In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the law. You, you've seen the signs. It's the law. It's good to have law. Sometimes we're reminded it's the law because if we weren't reminded, we, we'd say, well, yeah, but. But when we say it's the law, it's saying to us, better take another look at this because if you don't, there's a penalty. It's the law. Buckle up. Why do I buckle up? It's the law. Okay, well, huh? When you're driving along, you need to pull over. If you see a patrol car that is helping someone, you pull over. Why do I need to pull over? It's the law. <coughs> and in many workplaces, there are posters that say this and this and this. It's the law. I was reminded very recently, it's the law. When Yanis and I were in Bradenton and uh, we were behind a school bus, the school bus came to a stop at the railroad <clears throat> tracks and, uh, and I was fussing a little bit because you could see miles up this way, there was no train coming and you could look this way, there was no train this way and the bus had no students. Now, it may be my imagination, but it seems to me that when a school bus comes to some place like that where it's the law that they stop, they really take their time. <laughs> they pull up, and they will open the door, and they will look this way. They know nothing's coming, and then they look this way, nothing. But it's the law. Laws are good until they're wrongly applied. Just this last week, I read about that two-year-old that got locked in the car. Except the mother didn't mean to do that. You see, what happened was the mother was visiting her mother, and her little two-year-old they had in the baby seat. She put the baby in the seat, and she put the diaper bag next to the baby. And then she went around to get in to drive after she closed the door for the baby. But as she was going around, she heard click, and the doors were locked. She couldn't get the door open at all, and she realized the keys were in the diaper bag, there by the baby. She tried everything. She finally got a piece of concrete and slammed it against the glass. Jack, the glass would not break. So she calls 911 said, I need somebody that can come out and open a door. Maybe you call the police for me. She said, ma'am, we don't do that to unlock doors. She says, my baby is in the car. The heat is building in the car. The baby's crying hysterically. I need someone. Maybe you could call the fire department. She says, ma'am, the fire department doesn't come out to unlock doors. The grandmother tried. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's the law. They don't do things like that. Now the woman is seeing that the baby has stopped crying. The baby is breathing, but seems to be asleep. She doesn't know what's happening. Finally, they do find in the house one of those glass cutters that sometimes you carry around in your car, and that did cut the glass Get the baby out. The baby was sweating so much, but we'll be okay. It was a law. It's the law, so it's got to be obeyed. 
That's what the Pharisees were telling Jesus. Did you understand that that gospel didn't have a thing to do with food? They were talking about food. It wasn't food. It was the law and it was power. Who has the power? What's the law? You're disobeying the law. And Jesus said quite clearly, you know, it's, it's not what goes inside you, whether it's food or anything else. It's not what bombards you from the outside. It is the inside. And we say, I understand that scripture, but do we? Do we hear the whole scripture? Because Jesus is talking about us. Jesus is talking about us when it comes to observing the law and is saying, be very, very careful of the law that is over you and you are observing it just right down to the T, but, but you're not understanding. Because it's not observing the law that will be a cleansing for you in relationship to God. And he's not just talking about murderers. He's not just talking about thieves. Jesus is talking about those evil things like, like pride. Like envy. Like conceit. too close to home. But Jesus is saying the relationship with God is the most important thing. Now I came into the Episcopal Church because I loved liturgy. Before I went to work with Billy, I never had been in an Episcopal Church. And working for him, I had to go into a lot of different churches and I was acquainted with liturgy and I love it. But we can wrap ourselves so much in liturgy that liturgy can become our life as a Christian and we don't know anything beyond. And it can be the simple things like prayer and in our ministry to other people. And we can set aside segments of our lives that fit the Christian perspective that we've cut out for ourselves. And that can become very, very, very dangerous. Because then we get boxed in. We get boxed in. And our life as a Christian can't be anything beyond what we have made it. It's not open to receiving the blessings of God. I was told one time about a bear that was in captivity. And the cage for that bear was 12 by 12 by 12 by 12. It was 12 feet each way. There was a lot of criticism because a lot of people said that was too small a space for that bear. Because the bear would run and hit himself against the side. He would run this way and stop, and this way, and stop. And they said, you know, that bear has to have more room. That bear cannot exist in a 12 by 12 cage. And so they built a bigger cage, 36 by 36. And they said, what a wonderful blessing this must be to the bear. And so the bear started running and would run 12 and 12. Yeah. Because the bear had already begun to limit what his possibilities were. And our possibilities as Christians many times are limited already because the standards we have used to define who we are as a Christian. And there are magnificent possibilities out there if we would just turn loose and let God be God. This is a stupid story. 
but it makes a point, I think. A, a man with uh, a tree down in his yard after a big storm goes into a hardware store to get a saw. He's got to saw up that tree to get it out of the way. So he goes to, in, into the hardware store and says, you know, I, I need a really, really good saw. Man goes in the back and he gets the most beautiful chainsaw you ever see. Put it on the counter and says, this is the best saw you can buy. This will, this will cut through that tree like a knife through soft butter. So he pays for it and he takes it home. But three days later, he brings the saw back. And he plops the saw back on the counter and says, this saw is no good. I can't get anywhere with this saw. I'm worn out. And the clerk says, I don't know. What's wrong? Worked when we sold it to you. I can't figure out what's wrong. He reaches and he pulls the cord and the saw goes... And the man says, wait a minute, what's that noise? <laughs> you see, in each of our lives, there is unlimited power. But many of us go through our lives as Christians and never activate the power that we have. what Jesus is talking about. Don't let rules become more important than relationships. We all have unlimited power as Christians through God's Holy Spirit. If you're saying, well, you know, I try to be a good Christian, but I don't really think I have enough of the Spirit. I'll give you a simple rule of how to have more of the Spirit. It's just simply this. Give the Spirit more of you. Rules and regulations, they're good. If they're guidelines. But if they become the very essence of our lives, we go through our lives cheating ourselves. What wonderful riches through Jesus Christ. By simply accepting Him as Lord and Savior, receiving His Holy Spirit, using the traditions to guide us, not live for us, then we can understand the beauty of what it is to live with law, and beyond it. Amen.